The eye sees, perceives, looks, understands. But the eye also knows how to smile, laugh, cry. It's by studying the eye, its richness and complexities, that Santen has continued to develop and sell for the past 120 years innovative treatments to preserve this precious organ. In today's world dominated by technology, the eye has never been so essential. At Santen, we are committed every day to improving the quality of a patient's sight, thus improving their quality of life. Thanks to ever more effective solutions for treating ophthalmic conditions, we ensure a brighter future in ophthalmology. Born in Japan, we develop our expertise for the benefit of patients and physicians around the world. Our philosophy, our clear vision, exploring the secrets and mechanisms of nature in order to contribute to people's health. Santen, a clear vision for life. Increasing IOP is a key risk factor in glaucoma progression. IOP fluctuates over the course of a day with elevated levels at night. And IOP is still the only modifiable factor in glaucoma treatment. But is just a strong IOP reduction enough? Studies show greater IOP fluctuation may increase visual field progression. Quality-based IOP control may be more effective than just quantity-based reduction. Teflaprost. Has the power control IOP through day. And night with a greater nighttime IOP reduction. Behold, Teflaprost brings you the power of quality IOP control. Hey, hello, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the PGS Glaucoma Roadshow. I am, Glo I am Carlo Rubio, and I will serve as your moderator for this evening. So this is the second of a four lecture series on the basics of glaucoma. Uh, we discussed perimetry previously, and we will be discussing glaucoma, uh, gonioscopy today. We will discuss medical management and laser treatment during our third and fourth lectures. So these are must know topics for general ophthalmologists as well as for our residents especially since they will be taking our OPEX soon. These sessions are being broadcast on two platforms, via our Facebook Live platform on the PGS webinar page and through the PGS YouTube channel. So just in case um, some of your colleagues might be on duty or you might not be able to catch them, please tell them that these lectures will be available on demand. Um, also in case you want to look at the lectures again. So this will be available on demand on, the, on their Facebook and YouTube pages. So before we start, we'd like to give special mention to our, the, the generosity of our, uh, of, our, um, of our sponsor for today, Santen Philippines. Thank you so much for supporting the projects of the Philippine Glaucoma Society. So before we start, we'd like to call on Dr. Manalet Dolphin to give our opening remarks. Thank you very much, Carlo. Good evening, our dear colleagues. Thank you for joining us tonight. This evening, we continue with a series of webinars aimed for the general ophthalmologists and the residents and fellows. 
we, these lectures on the basics of a glaucoma were developed by the members of the PGS and, and have been delivered by our various members in the roadshows we did in the pre-pandemic area, which seems so long ago. These lectures are being improved and updated regularly. And for the benefit of everyone, these lectures will be uploaded in the PGS YouTube for those who wish to replay or rewatch uh, re these lectures. Tonight, we continue with gonioscopy, one of the uh, most underused, but one of the simplest of, the, of our glaucoma procedures. And we hope that you can learn a lot from this and be, and be able to do gonioscopy regularly, pre, post-op, and all the time. Once the basics of these lectures have been delivered and uploaded, we then plan to hold more personal discussions with our colleagues in all parts of the Philippines regarding their cases and difficulties in the management of glaucoma. If you have difficult cases or management dilemmas in glaucoma, and there are, uh, and you, there are a group of you who want to discuss it, feel free to contact us and we can arrange our virtual meetings with your group or chapter society to help you all. I would like to thank the PGS members and the PGS board for their support in this endeavor. Thank you to Dr. Happy de Guzman for spearheading this project. And thanks to the PGS technical team headed by Dr. Rainer Kovar and Dr. Cesar Perez. And to our new members, Dr. Jet Rayel and Dr. Paul Gomez and a recent, a recent fellow graduate, Dr. Roel Villar. Thank you very much, Usante and Philippines, headed by uh, Boyets, uh, by Jennifer Ramirez and for sponsoring this evening. Again, we hope you learn a lot from this and you get to watch it in our YouTube channel. The lecture of Dr. Uh, Reynoso on perimetry is already uploaded in the, our YouTube channel. Have a good evening and thank you very much. Thank you so much to our PGS president, Dr. Manolet Dolphin, for a very nice introduction. So before we get uh, to get things started, let me call on Dr. Cesar Perez to introduce our esteemed speaker for tonight. Thank you, Carlo, and good evening to everybody. It is with great privilege to introduce our distinguished speaker for tonight. It's been a very um, happy moment when you see your trainee in in UPPGH. He finished his residency in ophthalmology in Philippine General Hospital and finished his glaucoma fellowship in Philippine General Hospital Department of Ophthalmology and Visual Sciences as well, just a few years back. At present, he's the first representative of Philippine Glaucoma Society in the Cordillera section. Actually, at present, he's the head no, of the glaucoma service of Baguio General Hospital. Sabi niya, madami daw sila doon. Siya lang daw mag-isa. And at present, he's the uh, father of two kids. So without further ado, may we call on Dr. Aldomar Cariaga. Thank you very much, Cesar, for that kind introduction. Okay, let me share my slides. We'll be lecturing on a very exciting and important topic tonight. You know, a lot of our decision-making in glaucoma relies on proper gonioscopy. So even if you do not plan to become a glaucoma specialist, I believe every ophthalmologist should know how to perform this simple diagnostic test proficiently. So let's begin. Uh, when examining glaucoma patients, I wait. Narinig ba ako? Yes. When examining glaucoma patients, there is a minimum acceptable standard for examining glaucoma patients, no? And gonioscopy is one of the essential examinations that has to be done on all our glaucoma patients. So before we do gonioscopy, no? we have to be familiar with the anatomy of the anterior chamber angle. So just a quick anatomy. 
So the AC angle extends 360 degrees around the limbus. It uh, it includes the iris, no? the ciliary body band, the scleral spur, which is considered to be the landmark for open angles. Dom, Dom, excuse me. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Uh, this is Cesar again. Um, I think we still cannot see your slides. Can you please share your slides? Ah, okay. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> man, no? We're too excited. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sabi ko na eh, um, this is exciting, an exciting topic. Ayan, kita na? Um, yung first few slides mo, hindi namin nakita. Can ah, you Okay. Back? Okay, thank you. Yeah. So these are the minimum acceptable resources for glaucoma examination. I'm sure um, we've seen all of this. And tonight we'll be lecturing on gonioscopy. No? Exciting to. Okay, so before we do uh, uh, gonioscopy, you have to be familiar with the anterior chamber angle anatomy. Okay, So it extends 360 degrees around the limbus and this includes the iris the ciliary body band, the scleral spur, which is believed to be the landmark for open angles, the trabecular meshwork, and finally, the Schwalbe line. The Schwalbe line is invisible in most eyes, and it marks the end of your decimase membrane. <clears throat> Embedded in your trabecular meshwork is the Schlems canal, where the achis drains. The the trabecular meshwork is a spongy tissue where aqueous can pass through. No? It has three layers with a juxtacanalicular layer believed to be the major site of aqueous resistance in open angle glaucoma. From the Schlem's canal, aqueous will pass through the outlet channels, then to the aqueous veins, and finally to the episcleral and subconjunctival vessels. Okay, so that's clear, no? So why do we need gonioscopy? Because of a phenomenon called total internal reflection by the cornea. Because of total internal reflection, light from the angles cannot reach the examiner's eyes because it just bounces back <clears throat> from the cornea. So with a gonio lens, no, light from the angles is allowed to reach the examiner. Uh, when, uh, by the way, there are two kinds of gonioscopy pala, the indirect and the direct gonioscopy. But we will be focusing more on indirect gonioscopy because that's what we use in the clinics. So how do we orient ourselves when viewing a mirror? No? So if you have an iris and then you look through the inferior mirror, that's how it's oriented. It's not like what you see in indirect ophthalmoscopy where everything is reversed. In gonioscopy, well, in indirect gonioscopy, the left side that you see is the patient's left side, like this blood vessel, no? And superior, yung 10 o'clock nasa superior part dun sa mirror. That's how it's oriented. <clears throat> so there are two ways of performing gonioscopy. The indirect I mean the dynamic and the <clears throat> and the indentation gonioscopy. We will go. Uh, we will discuss that in in depth later. So for dynamic gonioscopy, uh, the Vogue lenses and the three mirror Goldman lens are the gonio lenses that can perform dynamic gonioscopy. Where in indentation gonioscopy. Uh, you will need the Posner lens, the Sussman lens, and the Zeiss lens. Take note that a coupling agent with these gonio lenses are not required. So what is the difference between dynamic and indentation gonioscopy? So we use dynamic gonioscopy when the, when the iris plane is very convex, which uh, prevents us from viewing the angle. No? 
So if this is an, this is an eye with a very convex iris plane, no? Yeah, so because of the convex iris plane, you cannot see the angle. So you ask the patient to look towards the side of the viewing mirror, like that. And now you can see the angle. That is dynamic gonioscopy. This is an example of dynamic gonioscopy. So on primary gaze, you do not see any angle structures. Probably a, a slit of trabecular meshwork, but that's about it, no? <clears throat> Ayan, with dynamic gonioscopy, now you can see the scleral spur. No, it's the white band here. I don't know. Do you see my pointer? Yeah, it's the white band. I see your pointer, yes. Yeah. So this angle is narrow but open. Okay. So what about indentation gonioscopy? So with the Zeiss lens, you can indent on the cornea and this forces the AQs to exit the angles. No? With indentation gonioscopy, you can differentiate if an angle has appositional or synecal angle closure. Yeah, that's why indentation gonioscopy is the minimum required type of gonioscopy for glaucoma diagnosis because in glaucoma, we have to differentiate between appositional and synecal angle closure because management will differ between the two. And why is it that the Zeiss can perform uh, indentation while the Goldman lens cannot? That's because the contact points of the Gonyo lenses are different. No, If you see the Zeiss lens, it has a smaller contact area, so you can depress a portion of the cornea, while the Goldman lens is 18 millimeters in diameter. So it's actually uh, the, the, the diameter is actually bigger than your cornea. So what are the preparations that you need to do prior to performing gon gonioscopy? So it's important to instruct the patient on what to do, no? Kasi nobody wants their eyes to be manipulated. So first, you want a, a dim room, minimal room illumination. Why is that? Because a bright light can uh, constrict your pupils and artificially open your angle. So use a, a minimal room illumination. You anesthetize the cornea. Use the shortest slit beam practicable, around two to three millimeters, and avoid shining the light directly to the pupil to avoid constriction. We use high magnification, uh, at least 16x. <clears throat> and we used uh, the dimmest slit illumination uh, just enough to examine your angle structures. Then the beam is set off around 30 to 45 degrees laterally. We elevate the upper lid if necessary, and then place the lens gently over the patient's eyes. So once the lens is over the patient's eyes, that's the time you look through the slit lamp, you know, so that uh, you don't, you don't uh, apply the slit lamp on other parts of the patient's face. The beam is oriented perpendicular to the angle and you examine all four quadrants. Now it may be necessary to alter the position of the mirror or gaze of the patient if the iris is very convex. And in the presence of appositional closure, that's the time when we indent the cornea or we perform indentation gonioscopy to look for peripheral anterior sanikia. And then finally, you record your findings. Okay, gonioscopy of the normal angle. Uh, this is a picture grabbed from the internet. No, It's very clear. You can see all the structures from the iris to the ciliary body band, sclerospur, and the trabecular meshwork. However, 
uh, not all patients will look, uh, not all angles will look that way. Kasi maraming variations sa mga angles. And on top of that, you will have to contend with patient movement, with glare, sometimes with media opacity, and even your skill level. No? If you're not adept at holding the gonio lens gently over the patient's eyes, uh, you will just cause uh, anxiety for the patient and then the whole procedure will be very difficult. No? Okay, here's another picture of a normal angle showing iris processes. We will discuss that later. So here are the landmarks, no? iris, airy body. The scleral spur is a white band. Parashang stripes. Trabecular meshwork is brown. And then the Schwalbe triangle, it's not seen. Now, another picture of a normal angle. You see that the iris is posteriorly inserted. So the ciliary body band is quite uh, broad. No? But you know that this patient has no angle recession glaucoma because the other eye has the same uh, findings. It looks the same. This is a patient with a narrow ciliary body, uh, ciliary body because the iris is inserted anterior to the ciliary body. However, you can still see the scleral spur and trabecular meshwork clearly. Again, this angle is open. Okay, what about this? Is this open, closed, or occludable? Hmm. Or is this a forest? Okay. Now we have to differentiate between iris processes and uh, peripheral anterior synechia. So iris processes are fine, lacy projections of your iris tissue, and they follow the concavity of your angle recess. How does that look like? So if this is your eye, no, an iris process will follow the concavity. So it's quite concave, no, as opposed to your peripheral anterior synechia, which are broad-based, and they bridge the concavity of your recess, of the angle recess. So it will look more convex like that. And when you indent, Iris processes will move with indentation while your PAS will resist movement. So going back to our picture, yeah. <clears throat> this is a difference between iris processes and your PAS. <clears throat> so going back to the picture, no, that one, this angle is an open angle with very prominent iris processes. This is still normal by the way. Yeah, so I encourage all the residents to practice gonioscopy on, uh, no, on all their patients, especially those with normal angles, because the only way you will be able to identify abnormal angles is if you've seen enough normal angles. You do not want to be practicing gonioscopy on abnormal angles and miss findings. No? So practice is the key. Now we go to gonioscopy in the narrow angle. <clears throat> okay, with the situation now where you want to minimize patient contact, it's important to have a high index of suspicion for those patients requiring gonioscopy. So if you see a peripheral van herix of less than or equal to one half, for me, that's the time I perform gonioscopy, no? Although it's, there's no harm in performing gonioscopy on all your patients, especially if you're practicing. <clears throat> okay, this is a gonioscopy flow diagram from Asia Pacific Glaucoma Guidelines. This is uh, to standardize our nomenclature for naming narrow occludable angles. So just know this by heart. So when you refer a patient and you say PAC or PACS, we know what you mean, okay? Just read up on this one. <clears throat> okay, 
this is a patient with narrow angle. So if you can see, uh, there is a sliver of scleral spur around the 12 o'clock position. And then as we go to the, sorry, this is not the 12 o'clock, this is the six o'clock position. And then as we go seven o'clock, eight o'clock, the scleral spur disappears, no? So this is the time that we perform indentation gonioscopy. Well, this is just, sorry. This is dynamic gonios weight, sorry. Yeah. yeah, this is, I am performing dynamic gonioscopy on this patient. So you see there's a, an area of angle closure at around the seven o'clock angle, no? And so because of that, I decided to perform indentation gonioscopy to confirm if the portion there is really synechial, no? Yeah. So this is a gon this is a different patient. So you see that the seven o'clock area is closed. And if yeah. We do not know if this is synechial or appositional angle closure. So we perform indentation gonioscopy. And take note of the appearance of DM folds indicating that you are indenting the cornea. So with indentation gonioscopy, you know that there is synechial angle closure at the seven o'clock angle. Yung six o'clock has open angles, no? So it is important to quantify the extent of your peripheral anterior synechia because the management will differ. For example, if we are faced with an angle that looks like this, the one on top, a lot of your trabecular mesh work is still visible. So probably this patient will benefit from laser iridotomy as opposed to the angle here, sa baba, where you have very little open angles. No, most of it is synechially closed now. Okay, what if we are faced with this kind of angle? Can you identify the angle structures in this picture? Shepri walang sumasagot. Anyway, sige. This is the time when uh, we perform a technique called corneal wedge because sometimes the pigments on your angles can mimic angle structures. So what is corneal wedge? Yeah. Corneal wedge is when you slit, uh, when you illuminate a very thin slit of light beam on your cornea like this. So just to orient, no? I, anyway, this one is your post, the, your endothelium, the corneal endothelium, while this one is your corneal epithelium. So the point at which they meet is the Schwalbe's line. That is the termination of your decimase membrane. So once you know where your Schwalbe's line is, then you know where your trabecular meshwork and your scleral spur should be. Okay, that's a very useful technique especially if your angles are very pigmented. So going back to the previous patient, ayan. So let's perform corneal wedge. <clears throat> yeah. So now with that corneal wedge, now you know that your trabecular meshwork is over there. That's your scleral spur. I No, that is not your scleral spur. That is your, uh, this, your Schwalbe's line. And do you see my arrow? This, this uh, pigmented strip over here is just trabecular, your, it's just TM pigments. 
this is not part of your angle structure. This is your, again, let's do that again. Again, so this is your trabecular meshwork. The white line here is not your scleral spur. Okay, so this angle is a little bit narrow. It is not wide open. And again, this is your trabecular meshwork. Yeah. Yeah. So aside from, aside from. Uh, determining if an angle is closed, we also examine abnormal pigmentation because pigmentation is a sign of previous iridocorneal acquisition and is also a sign of some secondary forms of open glaucoma such as your pseudo-exfoliation glaucoma and pigmentary glaucoma. So abnorm abnormal pigmentation is uh, graded subjectively from zero to four, from none, just visible, mild, marked, and intense. No? So this is how they would look like on your gonioscopy. We just uh, estimate this one. But when the angle is dispigmented, you know that something is going on. So, what are other things to see in gonioscopy? Okay, abnormal vessels. So, um, you're ab to know what abnormal vessels are, you have to know your normal vessels. So, the normal vessels of the angle include your anterior ciliary artery, which uh, enters your which enters your chamber around three millimeters from the limbus, the long posterior ciliary artery, the anastomose to form your major arterial circle. And from the major arterial circle, you have iris blood vessels. So this is how normal vessels are oriented. Sometimes, however, uh, the normal vessels are not embedded in the stroma. So they will look something like that, no? Your major arterial circle, or if you have iris vessels, they run uh, radially over your, the iris. Sometimes your your vessels, your vessels uh, appear over your trabecular meshwork, like this. So your normal vessels would somehow approximate this orientation. Again. Normal versus abnormal vessels. So abnormal vessels on the, on the other hand would be fine, superficial, and branching. And they extend anterior to your scleral spur. No? And when they're in the iris, they're non-radial. So knowing that, which of these pictures will show abnormal vasculature? From what I've said, we know that the top two pictures are the abnormal abnormal vessels. Itong dalawa sa taas. So, this is a swollen or an anteriorly displaced lens. When you see something like this, something that looks like a volcano on gonioscopy, you know that the lens is very swollen or it can be anteriorly dislocated. This is pupillary block. Note that there is hardly any space between the lens and your iris. Ito, this is a series of three patients. These patients are all one day post trabeculectomy. However, after trabeculectomy, the IOP did not decrease. So, what could possibly be your diagnosis? Could it be scarring? Could it be tight sutures? No. I always advise my residents before 
doing anything, syempre, nasa gonyoscopy tayo, perform gonyoscopy. Why is that? Because of things that, because of this, no? Block sclerostomy. Now, if you did not perform sclerost, uh, if you did not perform gonioscopy on this patient, you might, you will be managing the dif- the patient differently. Like, baka uh, ocular massage kayo ng ocular massage or needling or uh, you might even release sutures and all of them will prove ineffective because of this uh occurrence no all these patients had to undergo resurgery to enlarge their peripheral iridotomies no so this is blocked sclerostomy okay you can also see blood in the schlems canal in patients with sturge weber syndrome here the, this is angle closure from acil I know a lot of us na glaucoma specialists are not really fond of ACIOL because of such occurrences. And finally, this is a patient with very deep chambers and an IOP of 40. No? I told you before that Van Herix is never a substitute for gonioscopy. We do gonioscopy even on patients with seemingly very uh, deep chambers. So on gonioscopy, this is what you see. Yan. Cynically closed angle closure. This is actually a patient who, who suffered blunt ocular trauma and probably uh, that trauma probably caused severe intraocular inflammation, causing uh, cynical closure. If you will see the first video, no, the patient has phacodonesis. Yeah, phacodonesis. No. So this patient had blunt ocular trauma. So that is my last slide. Thank you very much for listening. Hello. So thank you so much, Dom, for such an informative and practical lecture. So I actually learned a lot of things also from your lecture. So um, we, before we proceed to the Q&A, we'd like to remind everyone to please check out the chat boxes of the platforms that you're using. So it's, if it's either the Facebook page or the YouTube page, please fill out the, the feedback forms. This will serve as your attendance for this session. So let us now proceed with the question and answer portion. For those with questions, you may still post them in the chat boxes of the platform you're watching from. So we are currently monitoring the chat boxes. So Dom, while we're waiting for the question, so kindly unmute yourself, Dom. There, yeah. thank you. Okay. So I would like to ask, no, Dom, um, since now you, you've briefly touched on this already because you said we're in a pandemic. Um, ideally, um, you should be more careful about doing um, gonioscopy because it's a procedure where, you know, potentially you can transmit COVID-19, so I mean the, the virus. So um, what are the procedures we can, what are the precautions we can take in order to uh, make sure that our patients and we are safe while we're doing we're doing gonioscopy. So kindly walk us through the what you need to what precautions you need to take as the person who's doing the gonioscopy and what the how you need to sanitize or um, clean your materials and what what you need to do with the patient. Anything that any special drops aside from anesthesia that we need to put to the patient. Um. Well, first and foremost, champagne. Before, the, before any patient enters your clinic, you have to screen him or her for any symptoms of COVID. So if the patient is negative for any symptoms, then uh, you can examine, you can proceed with the examination. Of course, me being the examiner should be uh, on level 2 to level 3 PPE. Yes. No? Uh, Personally, I cannot look through the slit lamp with glasses on. It's very hard for me. 
So I I be I, I'm more conscious with the things that I touch the, the patient, no? I I'm more conscious about what uh the part of the patient that I touch. Tapos uh you sterilize your microscope before and after with alcohol. Okay. And then the gonio lens, no, if you will look at the box of your gonio lens, there is a recommended way of of an disinfecting your gonio lens. Okay, so that's a very good point. Yes. yes. Uh but if you have thrown the box na, I think the best way to to sterilize or to clean your equipment is with soap and water. Can you use alcohol? No. Uh, for some gonio lenses like the Zeiss lens or the Posner lens, the problem with alcohol is na sa scrape off yung mirror sa loob. So nasisira yung gonio lens with with alcohol. So water yeah, in the Gonyo so lens, fine. even the other, like the Fundus lenses. So be careful. I just want to remind everyone, be careful with using yeah. alcohol. Yeah, so It might get hazy pa. Yes. Okay, so any other comments about that, Dom? Ah, wala na. Yeah. Okay, so we have a question here. So, when seeing non-HMO paying patients, do you charge extra PF for gonoscopy? procedure if yes how much do you charge for the procedure if you don't mind asking but or if if you mind then just answer how um if you do charge or not because i know that some doctors um charge some some include it as part of their comprehensive exam so you personally what would be your answer to personally, that personally i don't charge uh I, I know of some doctors who charge for each procedure that they that they perform on the patient Pero kasi here in Baguio where the buying power of a lot of patients is not that high naman, I don't charge. It's okay. set na set, nakaset na siya. So okay. parang 400 or 500 per patient, complete na yun. So maybe you would suggest, depend, maybe just see how the purchasing power of the patient and see how if yes. they can... And it depends on where you are din kasi. Um, you don't want I, you want to be, uh, I, I don't know, I, you don't want to be very uh, low sa iyong pagsingil compared to your colleagues kasi that yes. would put a bad light on your colleagues and you don't want to be very high compared to your colleagues then kasi uh, that would also paint a bad light on you. So, Pakiramdaman. It's an art, actually. Yes. So, so thank you for sharing that, Dom, because that's an art that sometimes you don't learn during residency. It's, you know. It's an art. Yeah, when I, we, even when I started private practice, so how do I charge? I'm not used to charging. So thank you for that point, Dom. So I, I know some people, just what they do is they just have two charging fees. So what they do is they, allow me to answer the question also, sometimes if you only did a few, they have a basic charge. And if you did more, more procedures, then they have a comprehensive charge so that it's more transparent. So another question that we have here is, there are some um, gonio lenses with flanges. So what is the advantage in using those with flange? The flanges are actually used to, uh, to, I mean, to retract the, the lids, no? Okay. So that, ano, hindi siya sagabal yung lids. The problem with flanges is, uh, it's a little bit more challenging to do indentation gonioscopy. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I know the Sussman lens. I, I know. I don't know. Ah, pero I've seen Sussman lenses with flanges, so he mahirap siyang i indent. Okay. Thanks. Thank you for your answer. Um. So break muna tayo. So to give uh, maybe somewhere just shy or they don't know yet what questions they want to uh, to ask yet. So. Um, brief commercial. So you can also try to look at gonioscopy.org. So gonioscopy is spelled as it is um, as it is usually spelled G-O-N-I-O-S-C-O-P-Y dot O-R-G. So you can watch different um, gonio findings so that you can familiarize yourself because honestly uh, right now we're not seeing as many patients so so that you're used to doing gonioscopy you can you can do those things also. So um, so Dom I know that um, do you perform you perform SLT, is that correct? 
Uh, or, or, no, or I don't like, perform SLT because we don't have uh, the machine here. How about here. the ALT? Do you perform ALT? Yes. Yeah, so, um, are all Gonyo lenses applicable for ALT or for trabeculoplasty in general? Or are there specific lenses that you should use or specific yeah. lenses that maybe you should avoid? Actually, um, some lenses have coating as protection for doing laser procedures. So that's the type of lenses that you have to use when doing laser procedures such as ALT or SLT. Okay. Now, um, if your gonio lens is not coated with that protection, it's not safe for performing laser procedures. How about um, how about some um, lenses like, for example, can I use the four mirror? Should it be the three mirror? I mean, just so that the ah yeah yeah actually um, what we use for laser surgery is the the lenses that we use for. It's like the lens that, that we use for dynamic gonioscopy yeah, as opposed to right, the one yeah. that we use for indentation gonioscopy. Why is that? Because with the, dynamic, with the lenses that can be used for dynamic gonioscopy, they're bigger. No? The okay. circumference is bigger. Tapos, because of the size of your lens, there is suction yes, on the globe. Very so... Yeah. That suction can stabilize your globe. Yeah. So to so, all those doing um, gonioscopy and SLT, ALT, so we're very important to use those lenses that have suction in the globe. No? So, yeah. um, so Don, can you share us what specific lenses do you use? Do you use just one kind of lens? Do you use two different kinds of lenses? Uh, it's always faster to use the Zeiss lens, no? Those Posner lenses, because you don't need coupling coupling agents. Can you okay. perform dynamic gonioscopy with those kinds of lenses? Um, yes. To a certain extent, yes. If, you're, if you are sure that you do not indent the cornea okay. and then you can just tilt the lens, yes, you can do um, dynamic gonioscopy to an extent. But it's more challenging. No? Okay. Sorry, what's the question again? Um, you, you speci uh, anyway, let's just move to the next question no? um, related to that. Um, so residents are in the process of, especially those who haven't bought their lenses yet, no, since maybe they'll need it for private practice. Um, do, you, uh, do you need to buy both the three-mirror and the four-mirror lenses? Or should they prioritize one over the other? Or what, what practical advice could you give regarding that matter? I think what we did before was we what different lenses for each person right so that you could you could uh yeah. for example you had the three mirror i had the four mirror so we just we just share so but for you how what would you, you know what each has their own uses no the okay. the four mirror lens no is talagang used for glaucoma specific for glaucoma while the three mirror lens although it is it can be sometimes used for glaucoma it's not enough kasi for glaucoma you need a gonio lens that can differentiate between a positional and cynical angle closure. However, that three mirror lens can also be used kasi for retina purposes. Eh. Okay. So or if they want to uh, recommend uh, one or, or ganyan. If you were to choose just one, I'll put you on the spot. Um, <laughs> just one? So I only have money for one and then I won't be able to buy a lens again. What, what should I use? You save up on both kasi. Pero, <laughs> um, Okay, I have my biases now because I'm okay. a glaucoma specialist. I'm biased towards the four mirror lens. Okay. Why? Because it can also be used for therapeutic purposes. Like if a patient comes to you with acute angle closure, you can actually okay. depress on the cornea and okay. try to break the attack with that gonio lens. Okay. Okay. Thank you for your remarks. Um, just gonna. I'm just looking through the questions to see if there are any. Other questions that we missed. Um, okay, so I think that we have answered all the questions. So last chance for anyone to ask any questions. I give you 10, 15 more seconds while we fix the next part of our presentation. Okay, so I don't think there are any more questions. So. 
So let me again thank Dom for giving an excellent lecture. So I actually learned a lot also from your lecture and for making gonioscopy more understandable. So you had a lot of, it was nice that you had a lot of videos to show exactly what you meant during gonioscopy. So I hope the residents and some of, the, some of our um, um, other ophthalmologists also learn from Dom's, um, Dom's presentation. So at this point, let me call on our friend from Santin Philippines, Mr. Bert Las Piñas, head of sales of Santin Philippines for a few words. Thank you, Dr. Carlo. Okay. Uh, good evening, Dr. Manolet Delphine, Dr. Cesar Perez, uh, Dr. Happy de Guzman, and to all our PGS members and viewers for tonight's webinar. So uh, also, uh, I would like to thank Dr. Uh, Aldo Mar Cariaga for your informative uh, lecture and for sharing your wealth in, in knowledge in gonioscopy. And indeed, this examination is really quite essential to all ophthalmologists uh, in effectively managing uh, your patients. And Santen Philippines is also appreciative and proud to partner with the Philippine Glaucoma Society to bring tonight's uh, webinar. And this verb, uh, virtual roadshow is a good initiative because uh, for continuous medical development, despite of the many challenges that we're all experiencing right now brought about by the pandemic. And our company will closely uh, work with the society to further bring such informative initiatives and updates to all ophthalmologists to make sure that the, uh, the most especially the patients will benefit from this. And because in Santen, we think highly of your patient's welfare. And with our new slogan, uh, it's uh, Santen, imagine your happiness. And with that, uh, thank you for giving us time for this uh, webinar, for tonight's webinar. And stay safe, everyone, and have a pleasant evening. Thank you. So thank you so much, Mr. Les Vinas, for your, for your, kind, for your good, great words. And thank you so much for your support for PGS activities. We look forward to working with you again during our next activities. So now to give, us, to give our closing remarks, let me call on the PGS Vice President, Dr. Hannah de Guzman. Hi, thank you, Carlo. Uh, good evening, everyone. I apologize for the lack of a camera, but my internet is uh, unstable right now. Um, so first of all, I'd like to thank um, Dr. Dom Cariaga for an excellent, very informative lecture. Um, if I were to pick out of our four webinars, if I were to pick which one uh, was the most important and which one that I feel uh, needs to be listened to the most. It's this one, gonioscopy, because um, uh, it's this is one of the skills that uh, ophthalmologists, not just residents, but those in practice, uh, tend to, um, to not learn as well as they should and then in the first place, they didn't learn it so well. So um, I hope that um, our audience tonight has learned a lot from Dr. Cariaga. Thank you for taking the time to uh, spend uh, with us tonight. Uh, so thank you uh, also, of course, to Santen and for your continued support of the PGS activities and to everybody in the PGS who has made this these webinars possible. Thank you for your hard work. Okay. Thank you so much, Dr. De Guzman, for your for the closing remarks. So we're about to end the session. So before we end the session, I'd just like to remind everyone to fill up the feedback forms in, in case you haven't yet. So they're pinned to the chat boxes of the Facebook Live and the YouTube channel. So hopefully we can see you on our next two lectures on Friday, September 25, and on Tuesday, September 29. So P aside from these two lectures, PGS also has a special session with the PAO on September 24 at 8 a.m. with the president of the American Academy of Ophthalmology, Dr. Ann Coleman, on the AAO's response to COVID-19. So we, sh we should be able to learn a lot from that and maybe apply some of that to, the, to our practices, to our respective practices. So 
So this has been a great session so so far, and I enjoyed it so much. But unfortunately, we have to end it, and, and so we formally bring the session to the, to a close. We'd like to also acknowledge our IT team, composed of our newly accepted members, PGS members, Dr. Jet Rael and Dr. Paul Gomez, and for handling the PAO side, Dr. Ravel Villanueva. So thank you, everyone. Have a nice dinner. Thank you for tuning in, and as usual, stay safe. Thank you, Carlo.